Hello again. I'm Dr. Nunez with Living Health. I sometimes get the question, what can I do about my gut health? Probiotics, prebiotics, is there something I, I can do that I should be eating or that I need to supplement with or the like? So let's get into that question. Now this is a series of videos on lifestyle medicine. That's the area of healthcare where we emphasize a person's lifestyle, the choices you make on a daily basis that you might have control over that can influence your health and well-being. The choices you make, lifestyle, can impact something on the order of 80% of chronic diseases. If you like these kinds of videos and want to hear more, press that thumbs up, press the subscribe button, and press the little bell so you can be notified of future videos. And comments are always welcome and we can speak, uh, we can get videos ready for if people comment particularly on a subject they want to hear about. So let's get into it. Gut health. What can we do? What is it about? And the like. Well, there's a huge area of research now going on in the microbiome. What is the microbiome? These are all the little bugs, the microbes that live in your gut. And there are many hundreds of billions of them. They can be anything from bacteria to fungi to viruses that just harbor and, and live in there and uh, do all sorts of things, including help you with your immune system, your immune response, help you digest foods, help you produce uh, certain vitamins like B12. Uh, that, that's bacteria actually are the ones that are, uh, that are, are capable of producing B12. Ne neither plants nor animals by themselves without the help of these microbes can uh, generate the B12. So that's an important little fact. So what can we do for it? Well, there are these things. People are into, into eating um, things that are probiotic uh, or they take probiotic supplements. We don't know an enormous amount about whether these things are going to be helpful or not. Probiotics are basically uh, microbes themselves that are in powdered form or in capsules that you could add to something and uh, or you could swallow them and change in some way uh, that microbiome. But since we don't have an enormous amount of research on that and what works and what doesn't and which ones are the right blends and the like, uh, maybe a little emphasis can be had with what we call prebiotics. Prebiotics are foods, nutrients that you might be able to consume that can feed uh, the, the beneficial microbes in your gut. So where do you get these prebiotics? What kinds of things are, are they? They tend to be high fiber plant foods. That's what they end up being. And there are also things that are, might be pickled or fermented like uh, kimchi uh, or pickles or uh, yogurt or kefir, uh, things like that that may naturally have in it either uh, uh, beneficial microbes or nutrients that feed uh, the beneficial microbes in your gut. The role of probiotics, yes, if, if perhaps you're uh, immune, immunocompromised at some levels, always consult your doctor about these things though. Or if you're older or you're having trouble digesting or you're on certain medicines like antibiotics, sometimes a recommendation is, is made for probiotics. Otherwise, tweaking the diet, like we've been saying. What can you do? Yes, the high fiber, and the high fiber, fiber comes from plants. Animals don't, uh, animal flesh doesn't have any fiber. Uh, neither does dairy, eggs, uh, nothing like that has fiber. So it comes from plants. And the fiber is what in your gut, as it, the fiber comes down through the upper intestine and into the lower intestine, that's where all these microbes are most active and they're the ones that are gonna help you digest this fiber. So as you increase the fiber in your diet, you should be aware you're gonna be a little gassier at first as that microbiome changes and recalibrates to be able to digest the fiber you're taking in. I can tell you in the developing world, uh, in the developed world in the West, where we're so wealthy and, and, and advanced, we think of ourselves that way, Sometimes uh, our deficiency is fiber. People out here uh, eat too many processed foods or have access to meats and animal products a lot, and they tend to neglect 
uh, their fruits and veggies. So back to fruits and veggies. If you can grow them in your yard, if you can go to the market and get them more frequently, that will help you in, in a big way. And that will make your microbiome healthier, uh, more able to digest foods uh, that have the high fiber and will support you in your immune response as well and make you stronger and healthier. So when you make these choices in your nutrition, you change your microbiome. I think that's the big lesson here. The way you can most effectively change that microbiome, let me highlight, is by changing what you eat. Because what you eat ends up being what those microbes are able to process and get through. So as you change what you eat, those microbes that are gonna be more uh, capable of digesting or processing what you're eating will flourish and the other ones will not flourish so much. And naturally, you change the balance of the microbes in your gut, and that could lead to a much healthier gut, a healthier immune system, and you feeling better and more energetic. So what areas in the nutrition can be things that you have to look out for though? Uh, yes, some people are gluten sensitive, and that's what you might find in, in wheat and wheat products. So if that is your case, then you'll, you'll have to be careful with those. But there's a whole other world of uh, fruits, veggies, cruciform veggies, uh, fermented uh, veggies or pickled veggies uh, that can be of uh, great benefit to you. Again, this is all in the context of lifestyle medicine, the different pillars of lifestyle medicine. So as you focus on these nutrition, sometimes people over focus on, on just the one pillar of, of nutrition. And there are the other five pillars that I've spoken about in the other talks on, on lifestyle medicine that we speak about. So don't get too frustrated if it's hard for you to make a, a big change in your nutrition. Take little steps and gradually shift. Make your plans, okay? Make it easy for you to access your fruits and veggies so that you have fresh ones uh, available to you in your home that are accessible or in, as a snack that you might have with you when you go to work or in your bag and the like. So the easier you make these things on yourself to uh, execute, the more likely you are to be successful at it. If you are getting overly frustrated by making a big nutritional change, then take a step back and, and alter that. You know, if you're eating a lot of meat already, well, try just dropping one meat portion per week and adding one portion of vegetables per week. And gradually and eventually, as you make that easier on yourself and harder to access the, the, the meat and animal products, you'll notice that your own behavior starts to change, your microbiome will change, and you'll be easier to digest some of these things in, in the plant world. So again, remember, gut health is very pivotal to the health of your immune system, to your whole body health. What you're, what you're feeding your gut is fundamental. So if you can avoid some of the processed sugars, some of the refined sugars, and start shifting to complex carbohydrates that are the fibers and the, that are made from plants, that come from plants, you may notice a big shift in how you feel and how uh, how healthy you are and how energetic you are. And again, think about that as you shift. You can do that gradually. So all of a sudden you're not loading yourself up with an enormous amount of fiber, but you're doing it gradually so your microbiome starts to change and you're able to enhance the digestion of that. So these is, these, this is just one little area of lifestyle medicine. These are things that you have control of that you can do, that the choices you make on a daily basis can impact your health, your well-being, your immune system. So listen in, and if you like these kinds of lectures, these kinds of talks, press that thumbs up, press that subscribe button, and make a comment below. So uh, if we get enough comments on something, we'll, we'll do a talk about those things. Lifestyle medicine. It's up to you. You can do it. Until next time, I'm Dr. Nunez. Bye-bye.